Hello and welcome to Money Time at Money Nine English. This is me, Ajay, and here is what made headlines on the first day of the week. We start with what's happening in the Adani Group companies. Shares of Adani Group stepped on the gas on the bourses. Adani Enterprises shot up 19%. Most of the other group companies also closed in green on Monday. The reason being on reports that Adani Group is mulling raising cash through real estate monetization. A report of the Supreme Court panel had earlier mentioned it was not possible to conclude if there had been regulatory failure on stock price manipulation allegations. The Supreme Court had given time till August 14, 2023 to file its final investigation report on Hindenburg's allegation against the Adani Group. And moving on, according to a media report, there is a proposal to change the formula for monthly pension under EPS 95. According to the current formula, the average salary of the last 16 months is multiplied by the pensionable service and is divided by 70. But EPFO may take an average salary of entire service period instead of the last five years. The Employees Provident Fund organization is considering a change in the current formula for determining monthly pensions. But if this new formula is implemented, then it may reduce employees' pension. And up next, Reserve Bank of India has said that people will have to submit PAN details if they are depositing 50,000 rupees or more with 2,000 rupees denomination. Although no form is required to exchange these notes up to a limit of 20,000 rupees at a time. Further, no identity proof is also required to be submitted by the person who has gone to the bank to exchange the rupee notes. Also, one can stand any number of times in queue to exchange these notes. Adding to that, the Apex Bank has also advised banks to provide appropriate infrastructure like shaded waiting space, drinking water facilities, etc. considering the ongoing summer season. Well, after the introduction of paid subscriptions for Twitter's blue ticks and fall non-verified accounts, users have started to express their discontent with Twitter. Now, Meta, which is formerly known as Facebook, is taking advantage of this situation by launching a new text-based app for Instagram. It will be similar to Twitter, it will be completely free to use. According to media reports, Meta has already started testing this new platform with celebrities and influencers. It is said that this app might be made available to select creators in the coming months. This is somewhat like an Instagram photo app. It is being said that users will be able to integrate their Instagram posts with it. It will provide users with the ability to attach photos, videos and links to their posts. While around 1.628 billion people using Instagram worldwide, the number of Twitter users is approximately 373 million. On Monday, users around the world reported inability to use Instagram as the app was down for most part of the day. And moving on, SEBI has proposed a change in rules of listing an IPO. Until now, companies were given six days time for listing. But in the proposed changes, SEBI has now cut the time frame to three days. Now, what this proposed change will bring in is that the company listing the IPO would get capital faster and grow the business. At the same time, investors who have not been allotted shares will get their refunds very quick. The next news is for those who invest in futures and options contracts in the share market. According to SEBI's latest proposals, the lock-in period or cooling-off period of shares will increase from the current 15 minutes to up to 1 hour after a share gets locked in lower or upper circuit of 20%. This will control extreme market volatility and aid in containing worst-case single-day price movement in the stock. Apart from this, SEBI is going to implement several other changes that would change the way retail investors trade futures and options contract in the stock market. SEBI is going to implement the changes to protect investor interest and deepen liquidity in the derivative segment. And Tata Motors on Monday launched CNG version of its premium hatchback Altros at All India X showroom price of 7.55 lakh rupees. The Altros iCNG comes in six variants. The powertrain is packed with advanced features such as voice assisted electric sunroof, wireless charger, and air purifier, among others. Customers get large boot space on iCNG variants of vehicles of Tata Motors. Tiago and Tigor already come with ICNG variants and now 
people will also get this variant in Altros model. Customers now have four variants of Altros to choose from which are petrol, diesel, iTurbo and iCNG. Tata Motors expects personal segment buyers to strongly consider the iCNG version of its premium hatchback Altros. And India's job market continues to face roadblocks. Creation of new jobs as of FY23 and has still not reached pre-COVID levels. Nevertheless, there are signs of recovery in the economy. The number of new subscribers that joined the Employees Provident Fund has reached four months high of 1.14 crore by FY23 end. New jobs created or net payroll addition has also increased to 1.38 crores. Most of the new jobs created in FY23 were grabbed by fresh freshers. Rise in the creation of formal jobs will help address problem of rising unemployment in the country. Adding to that, it will enable poor families to eventually come out of poverty. Now, according to industry experts, FMCG companies are back to their normal growth cycle after going through after five quarters of volume decline. FMCG firm Mariko has said rural India is showing some convincing signs of having bottomed out after going through a rough phase ever since COVID-19 pandemic had hit the country. FMCG firms are now looking to increase grammage and cut prices. Analysts have given positive outlook for the sector as high raw material prices are beginning to cool off from the record high levels. In such a scenario, Investors can get handsome returns in FMCG stocks like HUL, Darbar, Godrej, Mariko, etc. And now for the last one on the cards. FPI's bullishness on India's growth story continues. FII's inflow has been continuously increasing since March 2023. And now even in May so far, they have infused a little more than 30,000 crore rupees. Adding to that, FII inflows for the current calendar year has also turned net positive. According to stock market analysts, FPIs have been consistent buyers in a host of sectors such as autos and auto components, capital goods, FMCG, healthcare, telecom, reality and oil and gas. According to experts, FPIs have increased inflows because of strong macroeconomic fundamentals, prospect of reducing interest rates, positive earnings outlook and falling valuations of stocks. Sonam Srivastava, founder of Right Research said, and I quote, India is an attractive investment destination. She added that Indian equities were currently trading at a lower price to earnings ratio than the historical averages. Well, that's it for today. Here are Money Time at Money9 English. Download the Money9 app and stay tuned to Money9 English's YouTube channel. See you all again tomorrow at the same time. Until then, this is me Ajay signing off. Take care and good night.